our Red One U podcast, our season wrap up with that one Americans head coach Steve Martinson. Uh, Marty, uh, great finish to the season. We win six in a row, four in a row to start the playoffs. And, and then uh, things kind of changed there in game two, as everyone knows. But uh, having a couple of days to think about it and, and maybe watch some, uh, watch some of the, the highlights from that. Uh, where do you think things went uh, wrong for us? Well, obviously we gave up leads and, you know, a, a couple of key goals. We just, we had guys vacate the front of the net. And, you know, I thought a key one was when register left the front of the net and, and game two, you know, with their first, their first goal, of the third period. And, you know, we, we had a couple of turnovers. We had full possession of the puck in, in Fort Wayne in the first period. And, and so, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's frustrating when you, you know, when you have a team that's good enough to win and then you don't. Yeah. Cause you, know, you look at what CJ did and I thought Mott was phenomenal. Uh, you look at that, that diving play where he came out, poke checks the puck away and then Carol goes in to make the save. I, I, you know, those were a couple of guys I looked at and I thought you knew all season long and, and Mott hasn't been here every game, but since he's been back, you know what to expect from him and you know what to expect from Ben Carroll every game. Yeah. Well, um, you know, like I said, I mean, it, it's unfortunate when you, you know, we had, you know, it, it's a game of mistakes and we made some mistakes at key times and, and gave up, you know, we had a slow change on the, on the, on the tying goal with three, four minutes to go with Fort Wayne and, and, you know, it's just frustrating when you see guys in front and then, and boom, all of a sudden they leave the guy and the puck gets to him. And, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's painful to look back at that. And, you know, we talked about the net front and it's not something that we didn't, you know, discuss before the game communication and, you know, but we didn't execute when we needed to. A fan asked me this last night at the, uh, the end of season party. I think I already know your answer to this, but I'm going to ask you, uh, anyway, uh, they played what 21 games less than we did. Was that a factor at all in the series? Well, I mean, you know, not really when it comes down to, you know, the, the four games and five nights, I mean, that's in the same situation. Um, you know, I think they probably had less guys, you know, I mean, most of our team is signed in Europe, half our team is signed to go. And, and, you know, I think that sometimes sits in the guys back of their mind when they're leaving and, you know, I think, you know, one of the things that I'm going to try to do for next year is get, you know, a little bigger core of guys that, you know, I think some of the success that we've had here, we had guys that you knew were coming back the next year and they weren't looking to go to Europe and they just, you know, really wanted to win. So there's some things that I want to tweak, but, you know, like I said, I mean, I, that's, I don't want to sound like an excuse. It's just, you know, we had the, we, I thought we had the roster to get it done and, and we didn't. I look at a guy like LaBerge you know, who obviously has been such a big part of this team all year long. I mean, he truly played like an American Hockey League player, never took a shift off, always hitting. That's one of the frustrating things you had him this year. Obviously, if, if you were going to, you know, get him back here, you have to trade for him, right? Isn't that the way it works with the guys? Where Yeah, yeah. Well, part of it, too, is, I mean, he wants to move up to the American League, and I'm waiting to see who you affiliate with. And, and you know, you can – there's things that you can, you can always trade for players. I mean, I, you know, we had surplus players in the past and I had to trade a lot of players away last year at camp. So, um, you know, and that's uh, he's probably our biggest loss when we went up there and, you know, he got hit with a puck in practice of all places. And, you know, he, he couldn't skate. We were injecting him here, but the doctors wouldn't do it in Fort Wayne. And, you know, you're playing against a, you know, a physical team without your best physical player. And then Dyson came in and played the last game, which I thought would give us a lift. So, yeah, I mean, he's one of those guys, he's hard to replace, but, you know, you've got to, you know, you, you know, it's just like less. I mean, I, I just, you know, I talk, it's like money ball. You, you're, you're not going to replace less with another guy that with the same, you know, resume because those guys aren't looking to stay in our league. You've got to replace them with the next Les Lancaster. And, you know, I think uh, I've got a couple of guys targeted for that. So it's just going to be some new players and, and uh, but we're going to try to get the same type of team. You know, you look at guys like Asichuk, and he's been here for a long time, and, and Dyson, obviously, before. But um, realistically, when you look at this roster and you talked about a bunch of guys going to Europe, uh, how many guys are you confident that will be coming back? Well, um, you know, I mean, I think Asichuk will be back. Um, Lamont's gone. She's gone. Um, Ori. Uh, 
Macaulay goes back to the other rights. But I mean, I'm, guys like Shirley Newman, Frankie, you know, the young guys, Carol, Rue up. Uh, Amorosa has got a deal if he can sign American League thing, but I don't think if, if he doesn't sign American League thing, I, I think he'll be back. Millar's, you know, um, Bo is, is, he's a Minnesota contracted guy, but, you know, I think he looks at, you know, when I talked to him about, you know, Les Lancaster and Bretton leading the league in scoring and, you know, the style that we play certainly helps. Um, you know, uh, Conway is a guy, I think Conway will be back. So, you know, we've got a, we've got a pretty good nucleus. I, I'm talking to some vets that have played here in the past and, you know, I, Dyson, I, you know, obviously Dyson's a guy that's in the mix. So, um, but I probably won't wait all summer for vets. I plan on signing a couple right away and, and I'm not going to wait. So, um, hopefully we'll get some decisions because we can start signing guys, uh, next week. Well, when you, and two, when you, and for a selling point, I mean, we know that the Americans are always going to lead the league in, in offense and, um, a lot of years who was leading the league in offense and penalty minutes as well. But how about how big of a, I think we league? led the league in fighting majors. I mean, we were right there at the top of the league. Yeah. I know at times that we were, go, you know, one and two. So I think we had an entertaining team. Unfortunately, some of those guys were the guys that were hurt at the end of the year and, you know, obviously losing mean and we lost some of our physical guys, Otten Bright and, you know, Lockheed, I think we'll be back. I don't think he'll be ready to start the season, but I don't know if he'll get an American league deal after coming off of shoulder, you know, separation. So, and surgery. So I think Locke will be back at some point. What about, uh, and I liked him too. He didn't get to play obviously in the playoffs, but he was the backup. What about Marat? Yeah, well, we have Marat's rights too. And, and, you know, he'll be protected if, if some of these guys, you know, that you'll hope that they'll know by the end of July. Um, but, you know, some of the guys obviously won't be signing, you know, we'll save a spot for Lockheed. I'll have to qualify him. I won't bring out and bright back, but I'll qualify him and I'm assuming he's going to sign with Iowa, but we'll still, and then less. So some of the guys that were going to Europe and just in case they change their mind, you know, and want to come back, we'll, we'll qualify those guys. You have a great selling tool. Uh, you know, we've had the last two defensemen of the year uh, in, in Bretton and Lancaster. So, I mean, if for a young defenseman, you, you, you throw that out there and say, Hey, you know, you look at what we do offensively and we give our, defenseman a chance to to be really involved in the offense that that's got to be a great selling tool yeah I mean I use that you know because you know we had Mikowski before that and you know we've had we've always had some pretty good uh, you know scoring defensemen here uh Jens you know goes all the way back so I use that and you know we'll use the fact that we you know we were top of the league and scoring you know pretty much all year I think Fort Wayne got it at the end when they beat you know they they had a game that they won nine to one and I think they finished maybe a a little bit above us, but um, significantly we've had a lot of it, you know, that's with a lot of guys, you know, somebody had mentioned once that we didn't have a lot of guys at 20 and 30 goals, but it's because we lost so many guys that had scored, you know, like, like, you know, Mitchum and, and Garafa. So even though, you know, we, we, when you look at our final roster, it's because we have a lot of different guys come and go. Yeah. That's, I'm glad you brought him up because I was thinking about him. You know, Jesse Mitchin, how different might the series have been if he was in our lineup? Well, I mean, you know, you like I said, you're not playing with LaBears on the road and you're not playing, you know, Dyson came back the last game. But it, it was a, it was it's frustrating for me when you're in the biggest games of the year and you've got a guy that can hit with a puck with, in practice, you know, not playing. But, you know, I mean, in the playoffs, that's the way it goes sometimes. And, and you know, our depth was a little bit different. So um, it's, it's tough. It's tough to take. July knocking on the doorstep here. Um, can you start to sign guys before the finals end? No, no. Well, well, yeah, you can before the finals end. I think it's July 1st you can start signing guys. So, um, you know, I, I, I expect to sign a couple of guys right away. And then, you know, probably in the next week, I've got to move. So I got a lot of stuff going on right now. And, and uh, but I, I do expect to find uh, to sign some guys next week. Overall, I know it's hard to maybe right now because you, you, you want to take some time to to look at, you know, the whole picture uh, together. You know, we finished with the top uh, overall record in the West Con Western Conference and just me miss being the top um, overall seed. But because we didn't get to the finals, how would you rate this season in your book? Well, it was a frustrating season, you know, I mean, a lot of change in, in, in player personnel. And then, 
you know, getting guys back. I was really frustrated with Iowa not sending back um, Ott and Bright. And, you know, I had to talk she in the coming couple weeks after the season was over. And, you know, I just look at him, you know, it, you know, it would have been, it would have been a little bit different if we had Ott and Bright and, and Lockheed, you know, and, and those physical guys that were solid defensively. So it's a frustrating year. It's a frustrating end. I mean, I, like I said, I thought we had a team that was good enough to win it. And, you know, if we would have continued to play like we did in the first game and the, the first five periods of the series, we would have, but, you know, we got away from that. And, and uh, you know, it, I think at some point guys got to realize, you know, you're, you're, it's more than just individual stats, but yeah. uh, I think some guys, you know, we're still thinking about that in, in the playoffs about scoring versus winning. You brought up the affiliation earlier. Uh, we, we know now that we're not back with Minnesota, Iowa. Um, how close are we on signing a new affiliate? Well, we're not close. We're not remotely close to anybody. I mean, you know, I'm, one of the things you got to find out when you do an affiliation is you got to find one that helps you. I mean, it's easy to get an affiliate, but you want to have one that, you know, that isn't just a dumping ground for players that they don't want. And, you know, I've had plenty of times where, well, we had it with, you know, with Minnesota the first, the second year, and they kept, you know, they took out and bright and register and, and Atkinson and, and, you know, Lancaster, and they never called up, you know, their defenseman. I guess they've called up Sadik at the, right at the end of the year. So, um, you know, you want to make sure that, you know, you're, you're affiliated with somebody that's going to help you too and gets it. Um, you know, we want players, we, we do all this to win, you know, it isn't just about helping players move up. I mean, that's the strategy that, you know, if you're not holding guys back, you can ask a lot of them, but we, we, we loan players and we work with those teams to try to help us win too. And, you know, we view our fans as just as important as their fans. And we want an affiliate that, that cares about us winning in the playoffs and, and, and wants to help, you know, us get players at the end of the year. Marty fans were really excited when the announcement came out that you were back, you know, for, for next season. And what would, what message would you have to our fan base? Well, you know, it'll be nice to have everybody back at full, you know, at full capacity next year and, and get this COVID behind us and not have to deal with, you know, losing players at different stretches of the, of, of the season due to, you know, all the different crazy things that happened this year. But I think we'll have a more consistent lineup and, uh, you know, we'll have a, we'll have a fast physical skilled team and, and some of the names will change, but the style won't change. You played for the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, not many people gave a chance to get past Toronto. Yeah. Now, not only have they gotten past Toronto last night, they took down the uh, big bad Vegas gold Knights. How shocked are you that the Montreal Canadiens are playing for a Stanley cup championship? Well, I mean, you know, you went to bet on it at the beginning of the year, but I think St. Louis showed, you know, when, when you get a bunch of guys that make up their mind that they really, you know, they're focused and, and, and uh, you know, they're going to do everything they can to win. It's a lot of things can happen. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's great for Montreal fans. And, you know, I like the Vegas team. I like their style of play. And, and uh, but, you know, obviously I, I always want to see Montreal do well.